Hello, and welcome to Philip Bond's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called STP Loop Guard. There is a particular network problem that occurs when switches in a network wrongly believe that the topology is loop free. This can happen if one switch has software issues which prevent it from transmitting or receiving BPDU packets. The switch on the other side of the connection wrongly concludes that it is no longer connected to a switch and it takes the interface out of blocking state and into the forwarding state. These conditions create something known as unidirectional links, meaning that one switch can send and receive BPDUs, but the other switch that it is connected to can only send or only receive BPDUs, but not both. Spanning tree relies on the continuous sending and receiving of BPDUs. The designated port transmits BPDUs and the non-designated port receives BPDUs. When one of the blocking ports in a physically redundant topology no longer receives BPDUs, spanning tree will conclude that the topology is loop free at the port. Eventually, the blocking port will move itself into the forwarding state. This situation creates a switching loop. One reason why the backup switch will stop sending BPDUs is because part of the switch software responsible for forwarding BPDU packets has malfunction. Just like when a computer program in Microsoft Windows crashes, the mouse works fine. The other programs continue to run normally, but one window freezes up and doesn't work correctly. In this case, the backup interface cannot send but only receive. Loop guard should never be used with fruit guard or port fast, and it works best when it's installed on every switch in the network. Banning tree. Loop guard default configures spanning tree globally on a switch. Spanning tree guard loop configures loop guard on individual interfaces. Cisco Packet Tracer was created for CCNA students and does not possess the ability to simulate the loop guard feature on its virtual switches, but by the magic of video manipulation, I'm going to cheat in order to display what you might see if it did support the command. Let's pretend that we have already configured loop guard on all three switches. The loop guard feature provides additional protection against layer 2 forwarding loops by performing additional checks. Normally, the root switch will send out BPDUs that will traverse the local switching network. Spanning tree is blocking the interface port number 2 on the test switch. Because it is receiving BPDUs with the backup switch superior bridge ID, the test switch knows that it has been receiving BPDUs on interface number 2. So if BPDUs go missing on that port, loop guard assumes that it is because of a unidirectional link issue and reblocks it with the loop inconsistent state. Loop guard protects against missing BPDUs from switch neighbors caused by software problems. In the next video, we will be looking at UDLD also known as a unidirectional link detection, which protects from wiring configuration problems, usually associated with fiber optic cables. Cisco recommends that you use both loop guard and UDLD to protect your switch network. We saw how loop guard 
can protect a network from switching loops caused by unidirectional links. I hope this video was informative and I thank you for viewing.